Well, welcome along to your first steps with us on this uh, Key Play For You uh, DVD lessons. And we're going to look at a lot of things over the course of these DVDs, but it's important to remember on, on all of these, we're going to try and keep things relatively simple. There's no point in us showing you complex uh, phrases and um, complex arrangements of things if only a small percentage of you can actually manage. Our aim is to show you relatively simple things to execute but that will make a great difference, I hope, um, to your music playing and really to the overall experience of, of creating things for yourself. And that's where we're going to start. We're going to start by trying to create a couple of nice intros and endings. You may be asking yourself immediately, why do we need to do that? Because there's intros and endings that are so good on all modern instruments now. Well, yes, they are. But after a while, they can become a little bit boring, really, because you can hear a, a very dynamic intro and ending for the first few times, and it, it, it really does give you a buzz. When you hear it for the 40th or 50th time, it, it probably doesn't have the same impact. It, you, you probably do become a little bit tired of it because you've heard it so many times. So what we're going to try and do is create something of our own, um, something that we can keep changing and we can keep developing. And um, we, can, we can play to different rhythms. I'll show you that as well. Um, they may not be as dynamic as the onboard ones, but it's that, it's that feel-good factor that you're after, the feeling that you've actually created that yourself and tailored it to the tune that you're playing. So we're going to start with a, a very simple intro um, using a swing rhythm here. First thing we need to do um, is go through the four chords that we need. This is just a simple four-bar, uh, sorry, four-chord phrase that you can repeat as many times as you want to take you into the tune. So let's have a look at the four chords that we need. First chord is the good old C chord, which I'm playing in the inversion G, C and E, which is the standard inversion that most people will play it in. Next chord, we're going to move to A minor. And if you notice, that's just a one finger change. The little finger just moved it from the G to the A, and that gives us A, C and E, the A minor chord. I'm then going to move on to D minor. Now, for the benefit of this first bit of the video, I'm going to play it in this inversion. F, A, and D. And then we're going to go to G7, which is the chord that will take us into the tune. And I'm going to play the G7, F, G, B, and D. So they're the four chords we need. C, to A minor, to D minor, to G7. You can already hear that's a nice um, musical phrase, the, the, the chords flow nicely together and that G7 at the end, that seventh chord, is, is wanting to lead you somewhere and what it's going to do is actually lead you into the tune. Now I said you can play any inversion, um, let's just show you it using different inversions. We'll do the C and the A minor this time we'll go up to the D minor and we'll spread the G7 out like that. It does give a different sound and a slightly different feel. This was the first inversions. Second one. Maybe if you were to play the sequence through twice, you could do one inversions, one set of inversions on the first time through, the second set on the second time through. Now again, just before we move on and develop this further, if you can, and only if you can, rather than just A minor, try and make it A minor 7. It's actually a very easy change from the C, because all you do is add the A in. So I think most people can have a go at that. It's just a, a, a richer chord, a fuller sounding chord than just playing the A minor. Similarly with the D minor, if you can put the seventh in, which is the C, it does sound that little bit better. And then obviously still to the G7 at the end. So now I'm going to add the bass note as well on the bass pedals here. We've got C to A minor 7. 
D minor 7 and G7. Do the different inversions. A minor 7, up to D minor 7, and to G7. Now, okay, it doesn't sound great at the moment, but let's let's just put a rhythm in. And again, can I stress at the moment, I'm, I'm playing it in organ style, but in a few minutes I'm going to show you exactly the same result, just using an automatic style on the instrument. So we'll start the rhythm off, and let's just keep going through that sequence and, and get you used to listening to the tone changes from one chord to the other. So that's our basic chord sequence that we need. Um, I've used a string sound there only because it's a, a sustained sound. In other words, as long as I hold the notes down, it will stay on. Uh, it might be nice if you used a, a nice piano sound or something like that. But when I was showing you the chord changes slowly, then obviously that piano would have faded away before I wanted it to. But let's just swap to piano and uh, try the intro again. Just have a listen now. Okay, that might be more the sort of sound you're after, but I'm just going to go back to the strings just for the benefit of illustrating this intro to you. Okay, so what do we do with our right hand? Um, well, the simplest form is to just play the root note from the chord. So when we're playing a C chord, we'll play a C note with the right hand. When we change to A minor 7, we change to A. When we go to D minor 7, we'll go to D. And when we go to G7, we'll play the G. Now, I'm going to choose something like a vibraphone sound, something that's got some nice sustain on it, because if we're just going to be flicking individual notes, it would be nice if it actually lingered on. So uh, let me just uh, select the vibes here. That's the sort of sound we want, because it's got that nice sort of ring to it with a little bit of sustain. So let's go through our intro again, and all I'm going to do is play the root note from the chord at the relevant moment. Okay, it's simple, but it, it would work. You could just go straight into the tune now, um, and it will work. But maybe we want to develop what we're doing with the right hand a little bit more, because... If you listen to your uh, inbuilt styles, you'll hear they have little melodic phrases going on, little bits of music in their own right, really. Uh, only for a few bars. So what about if we just stick to the notes that we're actually playing in the chord? So, for instance, when we're playing the C, we might go E, G, and then as we change to the A minor, we're back to the E. And that's okay, because there is an E in the A minor 7th chord maybe run up the D minor chord so we went D F A which is the three notes out of our basic D minor and then to the G for the G7 let's put that together yeah okay that's starting to work I could sit here and I could show you a lot of different variations that you can use with that right hand. But I tell you now, the best thing you can do is to get that chord sequence working and just sit maybe for five minutes and just keep experimenting, trying different things. Like this, you'll, you'll, you'll find things that work and you'll find things that definitely don't work. But don't let that put you off. That happens to all of us. You know, you have to experiment to find the good ones. So let's let's just have a try for a couple of seconds.
Okay, I'm um, basically I'm um, I'm keeping to the same notes. I'm just playing them in different orders. Sometimes I'm running up the D minor. Sometimes I'm running down it. Um, okay, I'm always finishing on the G. You know, you might finish on the B with the G seventh chord. It will still work because there is a B down there in the left hand. So experiment that's the key to it you know we can show you certain things but you've got to put a little bit of effort in yourself and and try things and please be prepared for things not to work first time it's not going to happen unless you're very very lucky so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to put the uh, the automatic section on and i'm going to play albeit on two keyboards i'm going to play in keyboard style for you um, just to prove that the result is exactly the same so I've now put the auto chord button on and we'll start the play. That's made a nice little intro. You know, I'm using a vibe sound. You may use piano sound. You may use a saxophone. That's the beauty of it now. You're not stuck like you are with one of the preset styles. I can say, well, okay, yeah, the piece I'm going to play would really suit a piano on the right hand. And let's maybe take something like a jazz guitar in the left hand. I can now play the same intro, but it's going to give it a whole different feel. Listen. <laughs> So you're free to experiment, and, and uh, please do. That's a simple little swing intro for you. But one final point just before we leave this. Why does it have to be a swing? I just chose that to show you. What if we were going to play maybe a little Latin American piece, like a rumba? So I'll choose uh, rumba, or um, I've chosen Begin, actually, very similar rhythm. Um, I'm going to go back to the strings on the left hand. And uh, what should we have on the right hand? Um, yeah, let's let's leave it on piano. That would be quite nice. I'm going to play it quite deep down, so it's a nice, rich piano sound. Let's play that same intro, but this time using a begin rhythm. Just listen to how different it is. <laughs> then go straight into your piece of music so have fun with it it's only a, a simple four chord sequence experiment with some little phrases on the right hand and try it with some different rhythms you've got an intro there that will fit an awful lot of pieces of music i'm going to take a short break and we'll be back with a totally different intro this time more for a sort of nice love song or a ballad look forward to joining you <laughs> 